I cannot believe how well that just worked. I'm actually kind of flabbergasted by it. Perfect. All right, welcome back to the channel. Uh, finally getting these new cams and oil pump installed. This video is pretty straightforward. It's just um, torquing everything down, getting everything timed and installed. And uh, like I say in the video, I'm going by the fueling parts installation instructions, not the Harley service manual instructions, just because they are fueling parts and they have, I guess, specific requirements compared to the OE parts. Again, I did a couple things um, kind of out of order, so I had to take the like the oil pump back out and put it back in and take it back out and put it on the plate, etc, etc, etc. Finally got it all figured out. Read the instructions, guys. So, enjoy the video. Like I said, it was this was the more fun part of rebuilding this bike. Something, again, I'd never done, but it was everything went really smooth. Everything worked really well. Um, and it's finally, you know, the performance parts getting put in so you can kind of, you know, see your ideas coming to fruition. All right. I've been putting this off and putting this off and putting this off because I didn't know the best way to go about doing it. So I'm finally doing it because I think I figured out the best way to do it. So what I'm doing now is I'm taking out the inner cam bearings. This is one of them. This is the original one. Um, apparently these bearings aren't very good compared to the aftermarket ones. So basically, I tested this off camera just to make sure I could figure out how to do this correctly. So I went to O'Reilly Auto Parts and I rented a um, pilot bearing puller attachment for a five pound slide hammer. Basically what I'm doing is I'm sliding this into the case, tightening it up. You can see these forks spreading. And it gets onto the back side of the bearing. So tighten it up all the way just about. And then you attach the slide hammer in the back. There's some threads here and you slide it out and it just pulls this bearing out. It didn't damage anything in the case. Didn't damage anything at all. Um, it did bend the, I guess the outer race on this bearing, but these are getting replaced so it doesn't really matter. So yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and do this other one and show you exactly how I'm doing this. Now, is this the right way to do this? Probably not, but this goes back to the gym's tools things. Yeah, I'm sure the gym's tools work great at doing this, but those things are also a hundred something dollars. I'm cheap as hell. This shit's free to rent. So we're gonna do it this way. Okay, so this is the bearing we're gonna be taking out right here. This one's already gone. So slide this in. And you just twist, twist, twist until it locks onto the back of the bearing. And then the slide hammer here has a threaded tip. Slide it in, thread it on, like so. And then you just proceed to slide this hammer back and forth. There we go. Got it off. Um, yeah, it kind of takes a second for it to break loose, but once it does, it slides right out of there. Yeah, no damage to anything, so I call that a win. So I'm installing these uh, cam bearings into the case. And this little trick that I heard about was take a heat gun and just let it sit on the bearing housing for a few minutes, like five minutes or so, and then keep the bearing in the freezer. I've had mine in the freezer for a couple hours. And then you put the, take your old cam, and I have the old bearing, the old bearing on here, and you put the new one right there on top, and you use this as a guide to hit it in evenly. I cannot believe how well that just worked. I'm actually kind of flabbergasted by it. I'm gonna record it so you can see, but, like, it went in so smoothly, I almost don't believe it. So I'm going to go ahead and hit the heat gun on here, but then I will get the camera ready, and you'll be able to see me hit this thing in, because it <laughs> it's kind of ridiculous how easy that was.
Okay, all I did was put a little bit of oil around the edge of this. Just line it up. And just give it a little tappy. And look at that. Two bearings pressed in. Like it's nothing. Uh, we're gonna get this cam plate with the cams and the oil pump put in. Now in the owner's of the service manual, it says to put the oil pump onto the crank first, but I'm going with the fueling parts instructions because this is a fueling parts oil pump, not an OE fuel pump. There are three spots for O-rings on here. The two here for the cam plate, and then you have the uh, the one right there for the oil pump. Those are the only three O-rings that go on here. And there are six bolts on the outside, if you remember my little handy dandy chart here. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to slide the whole plate as an assembly on, finger tight the six bolts around here, and then I'm going to torque them in a crisscross pattern to 90 to 120 inch pounds, which is going to translate to me doing five and then 10 foot pounds. Um, just because I don't have an inch pound torque wrench that'll fit my uh, Allen socket there. And then once that's done, I will torque the oil pump bolts to the same torque specs. So five and then 10 foot pounds. Now you do have to take the tension off of the, the rear tensioner to get this in. Otherwise it will not fit. As you can see, I got quite a bit of assembly lube on this whole thing just for installation's sake. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and slap this puppy in here. All right. Now there shouldn't be any binding on the actual plate. It should slide on relatively easily. So you shouldn't have to force this at all. There shouldn't be any sort of like right and left movement. It should just slide straight on. I did line up the flat spots on the oil pump beforehand so it made it easier. So now I'm going to go ahead and put the bolts in. Like I said, crisscross. Okay, these are all torqued down to 120 inch pounds or 10 foot pounds and now I'm going to go ahead and do these and now these are numbered by the the cam plate has them numbered so that's one two three and four so that's the order I'm going to do these in and I'm going to do the same thing I'm going to start by five one two three four and then go to ten one two three four Okay, oil pump is good. So now um, you want to get up in here with, I'm going to use a flathead screwdriver and take the tension off of this tensioner, pull this pin out, and then you want to slowly let the tensioner back onto the chain. Do not let it slam because it can damage the actual shoe on the tensioner. That easy. And now I should have done this before I put the tensioner back on, but you do want to double check your timing marks on your cams. These are good still, so that's lucky, but it does make it a little bit harder for these to turn. And I can go ahead and put this on now, which is the chain guide. <clears throat> like so. All right, so that's end of part one of the cam chest rebuild. Uh, cams, oil pump are done. Plates torqued down. Um, the next video next week is going to be timing the crank pulley or the crank sprocket and the cam sprocket together. Um, getting those two bolts torqued down and then getting the actual cam cover put on as well as the final chain tensioner. So pay attention to that, that inner bearing trick. It did work really well. Um, without spending you know, the couple hundred dollars on the gym's tools, this was a trick everyone knows. You freeze something, it shrinks, and you heat something up and it expands. 
you can do with bearings. It works like that. Again, great. I had a good time doing these the cam chests because it was just everything went in really smooth. All the fueling parts were like really good quality and everything just you know went in no issues, nothing like that. So after the cam chest series of videos are done, which will be finished next week, I'm going into the the final parts of the valve train and then hopefully starting this bike up and hearing how it sounds now with a bigger displacement of cams. So yeah, as always, like, comment, share, subscribe, all that noise. And don't forget, new videos every Thursday. Be here. They kind of upload at different times depending on my work schedule. But yeah, new videos every Thursday. It's going to be happening every week until this bike is done. <laughs>